Hi, my name is Mary Spillman, and I'm going to talk to you today about the domestication of the KV. If you're not sure what a KV is, it is a rodent from South America. And I have a picture of one on the left, a wild KV, and on the right, a domestic KV, also known as the guinea pig, in his domestic housewares, who is looking quite helpful for a treat. Guinea pigs have been domestic for about 3,000 to 6,000 years and are bred for use in laboratories, shows, as pets, and as livestock. Wild cavy live in Central and South America. It is thought that the domestication of the guinea pig originated in South America where they are bred as livestock and are still bred as livestock today, where they are a delicacy. Both belong to the rodent order in the animal kingdom, caviidae subfamily, and all cavy genus are often referred to as cavy. A common association guinea pigs have with humans is their inability to produce naturally occurring vitamin C, resulting in the disease scurvy, if deficient. Uh, most guinea pigs are a model specimen to test uh, the effects of scurvy and how to treat it. Um, you can see my scurvy-free guinea pig over here wearing his little pirate hat. So it was very interesting to find this study, which compare the domestication of species to their wild origins, involving guinea pigs. So let's talk about the study. Benjamin Zipser is accredited to the design of the study, overseeing experiments, analyzing the data, and was involved in other experiments involving guinea pigs at the University of Munster in Germany, all through the Department of Behavioral Biology and the Otto Kreutzfeldt Center of, of Cognitive Behavioral Neuroscience. Studies were designed to compare wild KV species to their domestic cousins, the guinea pigs, using a young adolescent males. Zipser and his team hypothesized that the guinea pigs would show a different level of response than the wild KVs due to an altered biobehavioral profile resulting from domestication. Young males from both test groups, we'll call them wild cavy and guinea pigs were selected to avoid observing conditioned responses likely found in adults. Early and late adolescents were separated to further specify the study and growth of each group. Experiments were designed to observe uh, psychological, biobehavioral, stress from cortisol hormones, and hormonal testosterone responses. Wild domestic types were bred from stock housed on campus. Measures were taken to ensure a fresh gene pool by arranged breeding pairs and by new breeding stock rotations. Several tests were used. Um, these three evaluate emotion. The open field test is an unfamiliar open area with virtual grids mapped out. The KV was placed in the center. The time in the center versus the time along the wall was measured. Most prey species are not going to feel comfortable in an open, exposed area. The dark to light test also evaluated emotion. The subject was placed in a dark box with an opening facing a well-lit area. The time it took to emerge was recorded. A lot of times in anxiety situations, um, being tucked away in a dark, quiet corner is ideal. The step-down test evaluated emotion. The subject was placed on an elevated platform in an unfamiliar room. The time it took to step down to the floor was recorded. So this floor, the guinea pig or KV are not going to be sure, you know, what's down there, what's the floor made out of, is it safe, but also being elevated in a platform is going to be a threat as well. The other tests include stress reactivity tests to evaluate stress. Subjects were placed in a new environment and blood samples were taken at intervals to assess cortisol levels. Cortisol is released when a stressful situation occurs to help aid fight or flight. Testosterone was also taken at this time to evaluate the levels of testosterone in the adolescent males. The subject versus an unknown infant male is a social test. Subjects were introduced to a pen with a new infant male of the same type in a cage, along with an identical empty cage as a control. The time delayed to investigate the new male is noted, also the duration of the subject touching the new male's cage. The subject versus an unknown female is another social test. 
Subjects were introduced to a pen with a new female of the same type in a cage, plus an empty control cage. The time taken to investigate the new female, the duration of him touching her cage, and the courtship latency and duration of the courtship display are recorded. Let's take a look at the results. So in an open field test, wild cavies crossed more squares and spent more time in the center. If we look at the graph to the right in box A, we can see uh, the two sections are early adolescents. You have the wild cavies and the guinea pigs. And in late adolescence, there's the wild cavies and the guinea pigs. And spent more time in the center of the open area. Wild cavies definitely did more of that than the guinea pigs. And in the dark light test, wild cavies entered the light um, and spent more time in the light. So here's entrances into the light for early adolescents and late adolescent wild cavies. And the guinea pigs are almost absent. Um, and spending time in the lighted areas, again, wild cavies taking risks, guinea pigs hiding out. Step down test, wild cavies jumped down faster in late adolescence where early adolescence, there was a little difference between the two groups. So again, wild cavies taking risks. In the stress reactivity test, stress induced cortisol levels were higher in cavies. If you look at the A and B graphs on the right, you can see early and late adolescence. The darker bars are the wild cavy and the lighter bars are the domestic guinea pig. Overall, you can see the cortisol levels were much higher in wild KV as opposed to the domestic guinea pig, which were overall lower. Testosterone was measured and showed that guinea pigs had the higher values. Subject versus an unknown infant male, guinea pigs engaged in more interactions. The subject versus the unknown female, guinea pigs had a longer display of courtship. Both groups engaged in timely social interactions, meaning there was no delay to seek out the new specimen. In conclusion, wild KV showed bravery and were more likely to explore the unknown. This is an indication of survival instincts at work and a drive to survive. Guinea pigs have a higher crowding tolerance than wild KV due to captive breeding. It is more likely to remove an aggressive one and keep the calmer dispositions in the breeding stock. Higher cortisol levels found in wild strains are necessary for fight or flight survival situations. The domestication decreases the need for this endocrine response. With survival needs reduced, guinea pigs have a longer courtship display, while wild KV need to conserve energy, making mating a more brief encounter. Other things to consider. Domestication can have strange effects on animals. Like the coat color change, many species can lose pigments after as little as a few generations of being bred in captivity. Extended courtship displays could be an example of display brought on by the lack of needing to blend in. Raised testosterone levels in guinea pigs could result in their exaggerated courtship display. Does more testosterone equal longer courtships? Perhaps a similar testosterone value test could be done on domestic and wild predators. Uh, this might eliminate the lack of need to conserve energy for a fight or flight situation. Overall, I agree with the conclusions Zipser has made in this study that domestication has altered the physical parameters of the KV. Selective fancy breeding has ended up to a very different species we know today as the guinea pig. Other things to think about. What does this say about other domestic animals? Are there other measurable aspects lost in domestication that might provide clues on how to better care for them in the future? Are there traits we don't want to lose? Could we be considered domestic and our biobehavioral senses dulled? If anybody has ever seen the movie Idiocracy, I have provided a clip there or a screenshot. And uh, senses dulled is quite an understatement in that movie. You'll have to watch it. Thank you for your time, and we will now answer questions.